Okay, so this is what we got to work with right now. So you can see what I'm looking at here. So all I really care about, I don't care about up here. I care about right here. These are your pointers. Now this outside edge is a nice thing to go off of, but it's not accurate. This one's made pretty good. Can you look at how it's pretty consistent all the way around? Genuine Harley rims are not very consistent on this outer lip. You gotta come off the inner lip here, not here. Right here where the bead goes. So you get a pointer over here. You slide it over. And you put it right on that edge right there. Right like that. You can see what's going on. Oh, it hit. That might be a problem. And the other thing is you look at the bead over here. And that's your up and down. So first thing I do is screw this thing up. Alright, so where's my wrench at? Okay, this is for when it's loose. These nipples have Allen's in the back. Like that. And then uh, the screwdriver, the old one here, is for the old wind. Over here. You can see how that nipple's not even in there hardly at all. So, this one here. You would use this style here to tighten it up. Like that. So, different ones, different tools. This here is the Harley, genuine Harley one. This is actually a genuine one. Nipple wrench. So it goes in here. Like this, and it tightens it up. So right now, we're hitting. Right there, we're hitting. So that means we've got to tighten up these spokes on this side to pull the rim that way. Now you might have to loosen up some over here if there's tight ones. See? These feel, these sound fairly tight. So you might have to loosen those up a little bit to allow this to move over here. Unless these are loose. Those feel relatively tight also. So you listen by noise helps to do a lot. And I don't even use an indicator, I just go by noise. When I hear it go tick, 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 I know where the high spot is just by looking at it, or by listening. Don't even have to look at it. Okay, so right now we're, right here we start getting tight. That's a tight one. I like working on the back side here, but a lot of this rim is in the wrong spot. Okay, so right here is where it's hitting on the back side. Right here's where we're hitting on the other side. So you got five of these here that are, need to be moved over. Here's a loose one right here. This one. Okay, still there. So I can loosen up the other side over here. Looking for tight ones.
pretty far off. Move it out of the way so you can actually turn it. Go over here. I'm not sure how much of this you can really see what I'm doing. So basically, we're going to go over here. You can see where I'm at here. You can hear it hitting. So we got to get that off. We got to get it from away from being hit. So, so these go groups of fans, which are all the spokes right here. So this is a fan right here. That's one fan, another fan. You work, you work in groups of two. So you see we're hitting at. Yes. Right here is where it's hitting. Right here. So these are the spokes it's hitting. See the points are at is right there. Points right on this one. So these five spokes are where we need to move. Mainly this group right here is what needs to move. Over here we got a gap. You see, you got a big gap right there. See the gap? Now, there might be some up and down going on here, too. Doesn't look like too much. So it's not too bad. So, I got to tighten these up on this side and loosen these on this side and get the thing moved over. <clears throat> if you find any loose spokes, tighten them up a little bit because you don't want to be working on just tight spokes. You want all the spokes to be pulling equally. And that got me off of it right there, just doing that. Now we kick it back over some more. See, listen how much he's dragging. I think it starts getting real heavy over here. Over here it's kind of light. And you don't need much more to make clearance for that. It gets progressively more as you go in. This spoke doesn't have a lot of tension on it, so crank up some tension on it. far over here so I'm going to move to the other side start tightening these up over here nice loose spoke there Spokes are relatively loose here where it's low. Okay, that's rumble right there, but there's tight and loose spokes in there right now. See how much straighter it's going now. Look down here, you can see there's some up and down in there. See the up and down? So we got to get the up and down out. So the up and down means it's the rim's going like this relative to the hub. So to get up and down out, you got to... If you want this side to go up, let's say this is the low spot, then you have to tighten, loosen these spokes up here and tighten these down here. 
if this was the high spot where it's hitting, then you have to tighten these spokes up and loosen these. Now you always want to loosen up the loose ones first. Or, you know, the, ones that, the ones that are real tight down here, you just lo loosen them up. The ones up here that are fairly loose, you tighten those down. But the, the goal right now is to get all the spokes the same torque. So usually what I do once I get it close, I go ahead and torque all the spokes. And try to get tension on all of them. And re it back up slightly and then go work on your up and down. If you don't do it that way, the, the rim actually gets flat spots in it as you go around. It can have like six or eight flat spots in it. Because wherever there's tight spokes, it's going to pull tight. And if you got loose spokes here, loose here, loose here, and tight here, it's going to make a big flat spot right here. So you want to make all these spokes about equal torque and move it how you want it to move. The other thing you got to worry about is the offset. So offset is from the where this hub is relative to the outside edge. And that's what they're straight edges for here. So what I do is I come off our edge. You can see how we got very little offset here, see? You go on the other side and do the other thing. And see, this one we have the gap that's on the hub. The other one over here is on the rim. So what I do is I center it up initially. Because usually nine times out of ten when you center up the hub and the rim, it's pretty close. So right now this rim is too far this way, so I gotta move it that way a little bit. So that means I just have to tighten all of these spokes over here first and pull it that way. So that's what we're gonna do. So we wanna get all the spokes equally torqued and we wanna go that direction. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna come back and get that up and down out. Up and down is the hardest part to get out. So and most of this is just done by feel. Because just because you're tightening up a spoke, you think it's going to move that way. It might not move there because it's fighting against three, four, five other spokes that are fighting with you. It's going to go where it wants to. Okay, so I start at the valve stem hole, wherever that is, right here. And we're going to tighten all these spokes up on this side over here. So there's our hole. One, two, three, Loosen this up. So I want two flats tight, and the rim is still pretty straight. Now I'm going to look at our offset. We're neutral. And right now we're straight on both, we're right equal right now. So that centered it up. So now, see how we're straight right in here. We just barely got a little bit of gap there at most, if anything, is a little bit. And over here, we're sitting flat on the rim and on the hub all the way around. Now when it comes to offsetting, I don't mind having a little bit more clearance on this side here than on this side. So you want to have chain clearance. So that means right now it still needs to go to the right a little bit further than what we are right here. So, but we're close. Now I'm going to tighten this side of the rim up a little bit and I'm going to go one flat tight on the tight ones and then loose, tighten up whatever loose ones we have left. 
trying to equalize the torques. All these spokes are already pretty tight. They're all tight. Okay. Here's pretty even. Dragon hair to there, two fans. Pretty much just the one now. Okay. Pretty close. Slight offset to the right. Pretty much where I want it to be. So right now with this on here, we're on the hub, and see the rim is just barely off of it. See about 20 thou in there. 29 degrees, check it again. This one's flat, see no noise. You go over this side and do the same test. See we're pretty much neutral here. Looks like we got a slight gap in the center, but not much. Turn it 90 degree, check it again. And in this spot here, you got more of a gap right here than you had before. So, I don't know if you can see that or not. I turn the view screen so I can see what you're looking at. So, see the gap right here, what you're looking at. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap, about 30 thou in there. So these are pretty close. Turn the wheel some more. Check it again. See, so aftermarket wheels, are, everything's pretty straight and true. The genuine Harley parts, these hubs, they go like this, and the rim goes like this because they're not even. The aftermarket stuff's a lot better quality. See how straight everything is machined? Harleys are not that way. So you can see how we're really close down here, but the up and down is still in there. So I gotta work on this up and down now. So if you put the pointer right on this rib right here, you'll get up and down. Come over here like this, like that. You get an idea where you're at. You can also put it right here in a bead, right up in here. You have an idea too. The disadvantage of being right here, it's a round circle, so if the pointer goes off center slightly, it'll have a gap. 
you got clearance and you might not do what you think you're doing. But for what we're doing right here, it will work what we're doing. Now if we come off of this bead right over here, you're getting two things at once. The problem is how do you know which one it is? See, it's rubbing. You can hear rubbing, it's hard to tell what it is. Now the other part is going in this flat spot in the middle, which is not nearly as accurate as the other ones. Remember, this is not a machine surface, so it doesn't really matter where you're at. So, realistically, this area is probably the most accurate thing to come off of. Usually, I come off of this bead right here or right here. It's a variable thing. As you can see, it's about an eighth inch. Well, maybe not an eighth inch. It's a good 16, sixteenth of an inch to 70 thousandths out, 80 thousand maybe. So, this is our high spot. That means all of these need to be loosened up. These need to be tightened up. So, there we go. All right, we'll be back.